Dates are great, right? Until they're not. Like, maybe he said, suck, bro, to your dad. Maybe she won't stay off her phone. Maybe he won't stop taking selfies. Or maybe he said you remind him of someone special. His ex-girlfriend. Yeah, that's It can make you wish dates came with an escape button. But there's a way to make dating a better experience. We can have coffee without conflict. We can go to dinner without wanting to dash. We can save the date. All right, so if you could have an ideal date, like the perfect best date that you could ever dream of and think of with no limitations, like money wasn't a limitation, time, like anything, if you could do anything, go anywhere with anyone, what would that ideal and best date look like? Turn to the person next to you, around you, and talk about it. Like even if you're not dating, like if you could just imagine in the future, what would your ideal best date be and look like? Number two, they're sweaty. So they're either sweaty 
or their eyes cool. Like these things are waterfalls, they're leaky faucets, so are my feet, it's disgusting. So like I'm super insecure and self-conscious and like I don't know how she's gonna feel about it. So at some point in the movie, I don't know when, like I went for it and held her hand and I knew immediately that she was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't wanna date this guy for the rest of my life because his hands are gross. And so at some point during the movie, like, she slides her hand off of my hand really, really awkwardly. And I, s I swear my hands were so sweaty that, like, you could hear the hand, like, like, like made, made this nasty, slimy sound. It was the worst. So that was a really, really awkward day that I wish I could have saved. And now fast forward. Um, to high school to prom proposals. So like prom proposals for you guys today are huge. Like you you have so much pressure. Guys have so much pressure to do prom proposals. Girls have so much pressure to say yes for prom proposals, especially because they're public. Like it was pretty much the same when I was in high school. So like I had the pressure that I had to go big and do something special. So one of my prom proposals um, with with a girlfriend at the time um, was with an ice cream cake because that was her favorite, was ice cream cake, and I worked at Dairy Queen, so got an ice cream cake at Dairy Queen, a cute little heart shape, and I thought it would be cute to put candles on it that spelled prom, super cheesy, like put candles on it, prom, um, so then I go to her house, and I light the candles on the cake, and then I go to her door, and I knock, and I knock, wax is dripping, and I knock, looks like crap, and a knock, and she answered, and here I am with this ice cream cake with like melted wax all over the cake. It looked horrible, like nothing that I pictured in my mind, and then we ended up eating waxy ice cream cake. It just, it wasn't that good. I wish I could have saved that proposal and done that over and made it better. Um, fast forward even more to my college experience. Before I was with Crystal, uh, I met this girl at Lifelight Music Festival uh, that I was kind of interested in, and she went to Augie. Yikes. Uh, but she went to Augie, and we ended up texting, and I asked her out on a date, and we planned on, like, just let's just go see a movie. Like, that's pretty simple. I love movies, she liked movies, so cool. So the plan was to go pick her up at Augie, and then go see a movie. And I got there to go pick her up, and guess what happened? She stood me up. She didn't show up. She didn't show up. It was, it was awesome. It was the best. I was so, so angry. Um, but it was all good because later that night she texted me and she apologized and she felt bad, you know, the whole spiel. Um, and she's like, let's like give me another chance. I'm like, okay, yeah, sweet, sure. So the next weekend we planned on the same thing. Um, let's go to a movie. So I went to Agni, went to go pick her up. <laughs> Guess what happened? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you should be laughing. <laughs> I got stood up not once, but twice by someone. Never experienced that before. It was the worst, but it was totally cool because I met Crystal and we got married and now we're in love. So, those, those were some of my, my awkward and cringy moments that, that I wish I could have saved and those things could have been better. And maybe you've been there, maybe you've had some similar experiences, maybe you've been on a really, really bad date been on many really bad dates. Maybe you've never even been on a date before at all. Maybe you've been on like one date or two dates or three dates and they all went super, super well. And that's awesome. But regardless, the next couple of weeks with this series are for you. Because whether or not you're dating now, at some point you probably will be dating. So tonight we're going to talk about that. We're talking about dating Maybe you don't even use the words date or dating because that's just like dated. You just don't use that word anymore because there's like a million ways to categorize all of the relationships that you're in. Like maybe you're just talking to the person. Maybe you're just chilling. You're just snapping. You're just texting. Whatever. Maybe you're the person that moved two states away and you're just FaceTiming. Like that's what the relationship is. But to simplify things, we're just going to say dating. Okay? And then we're going to define dating. So this is what we're going to define dating as meaning. Being in a relationship where the other person means more to you than just being a good friend. So no matter how you define it, you may not really be interested in talking about this subject, especially at church. You may not be interested in it, especially at church. And here's a few reasons why. So maybe 
Um, you're, you're in a situation that just doesn't need a label. Like, you don't want a label with it. You're both cool with not labeling it. Like, you don't want it to be exclusive. Um, and you just don't really want to put a label on it because you don't want it to get any heavier um, than what it already is. Maybe you're not even thinking about dating, like at all. Like, it's not even on your radar. Like, you're already in so many sports. Like, you care about your school. Um, you're worried about your GPA so you can get into college. Like, you're taking care of your siblings. There's just so much going on in your life already that you couldn't even imagine adding dating on top of that entire list. Maybe you can't find somebody that you're interested in. Like your standards are just so high that nobody's meeting them. And you just can't find somebody that you like. Or maybe the opposite, maybe everybody that you're interested in just isn't interested in you. I know how that feels. That was my life like all through middle school and high school. Every person that I liked and was interested in just wasn't interested in me. Or maybe your parents, your family have just set boundaries in your life, and you're just not allowed to date right now at this point because they want you to mature emotionally and spiritually, and they love you. They're not setting those boundaries to punish you. They love you because they want you to be ready when you do go into that dating experience. So on top of all of this, like you might be thinking to yourself right now, great, now I get to hear Pastor Ryan talk about dating from a churchy perspective, and he's gonna tell me how bad it is, he's gonna tell me not to date, and just read my Bible more, just pray more, and then date when you're 35, all right? Just date when you're 35. Maybe that's what you're expecting to hear from me tonight, but that's not what I'm here to do. I promise you, this series is not to encourage you to not date. Like, that's not what we're gonna talk about. This series is actually Bear with me, it's actually teaching you to date well. It's going to teach you to date well, to be prepared when that time comes, or if you currently are dating. So no matter where you fall on the dating spectrum, whether you're solidly single or like in a soulmate status right now, Odds are you will date at some point. And if you will have a relationship one day, what we're going to talk about tonight will give you the best shot at saving the day and having a good experience and putting Jesus first, putting your faith first and your faith community first in that relationship. So we're going to go to the Bible and you might be thinking, what? The Bible has stuff to say about this? Yeah, the Bible has a lot to say about a lot of different things with your life, and one of them is dating, and sex, and relationships. So we're going to go and look at that today, and the book that we're going to look at is a book called Proverbs. How many of you guys have heard of Proverbs before? And I'm not talking like ancient Chinese Proverbs. Yeah, I saw a few hands go down. So this book is called Proverbs, um, and basically it's all about wisdom. It's about wisdom, which basically means that you're hearing knowledge, that you've received knowledge, but then you do something with it. Like you take that knowledge and you apply it to your life and to the choices that you make. So this book was written by a guy named Solomon. He was a king and God gifted Solomon wisdom, like better wisdom than anyone in the, in the entire world. And he ruled God's people with wisdom. But because he was wise, just because he knew better, didn't mean that he did better. I'm gonna say that again because I think we can all relate to that. Just because he knew better, doesn't mean that he always did better. Some things he had to learn the hard way. So whether he learned from doing it right or getting it wrong, you can say that Proverbs is like that secret sauce to making wise choices. So when it comes to dating, Gaining and applying wisdom is the best way to save the date. So we're going to look at a verse in Proverbs 24, 27. It's a really short verse. I'm going to read it out loud for you guys. It says this, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Wait a minute. Nick, did you get the right verse up? I assume I, I'm just the computer it, guy. It looks like... Yeah, but like this is talking about like landscaping. Hey. Chad, Chad, you're a landscaper. Chad, you know, about this? 
Okay, I might have to come back there and switch it up. No, I'm just kidding. No, this is the right verse that we're talking about when it comes to dating and relationships. And you might be reading this and you're like, what? Like, what the heck does this have to do with dating? But we'll get there. So basically, like, Solomon's talking about building a house here. And he has this ideal to-do list and these steps when it comes to building a house. So it goes as follows. Step one is get your land ready for the house. Step two, then build your house. I'll say that again. Step one, get the land ready. Number two, build the house. So I don't know how much you guys know about building houses, and I don't even really know a lot, but I do know that the land and the foundation is really important. That you have to have good dirt, that you have to level the dirt, and then when it's level, you pour the concrete for a solid foundation that you can then build a house upon. So if you didn't have that good dirt, and it's not level, and that concrete foundation, then everything just crumbles. So life works the same way, that preparation is the foundation that success is built on. But here's the thing, even though we know preparation is good for us, how often do we actually do the prep work before we try to be successful in our life? And let me give you a few examples. We know that we have a big test coming up, but we don't study until the day before. Or for some of us, like 10 minutes before. Or like two minutes before, and like we just look off the person's study notes next to us, like right before. Or we know that we need a certain GPA to get into the certain college, to get a certain scholarship, to pay for the certain college, but we don't start caring about our GPA until our junior year of high school. That was me. Man, I bombed the class my freshman year because I just didn't care about it. And holy cow, did I reap the consequences of that with that one bad grade on my GPA. We know that we have a big recital coming up or a soccer meet or a choir concert, uh, but yet we don't practice for it at all and we let our team down when it comes down to it. Or we know that there are tryouts on the horizon, but we've been playing Xbox and PS4 all night and again, didn't put in the work and then we didn't make the team. Or we know that we have a lot of homework that's due. I heard some girls earlier talking about all the homework you have, but yet we spend the whole night just making TikToks with our friends and scrolling through memes after memes after memes and then we don't get that homework done. And I'm not sharing these examples to make you feel bad, to guilt you, or to shame you, because it's natural. Like, I've done this, your small group leaders have done this, it's just how we are. But if we want a good result, we have to take the right steps in the right order. And dating is no different. So let's apply Solomon's guide to home building to our dating life. So step number one, get yourself ready to date. And step two, then date. So when your parents are, are like speaking wisdom into your life and setting those boundaries, it's because they are trying to get you ready when you date so you don't get into those relationships and it's just catastrophic and it ruins you or the other person. They love you. They're trying to help you build a foundation. Get yourself ready and then date. So you can say it this way, instead of waiting to find that perfect person, instead of waiting to find that right person, work on becoming the right person. So in other words, when it comes to dating, becoming the right person is greater than finding the right person. I'll say that again, when it comes to dating, becoming the right person is greater than finding the right person. If you want to save the day, and you want your relationships to have the best chance at succeeding, you start with the foundation. And that means you start focusing on you. Like it starts with you, and that doesn't always come naturally to us. I want to look at one more passage tonight in the Bible, and this is going to be far more familiar to you. It's from 1 Corinthians, a book called 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote this book to a church in a city called Corinth. Um, and it's in chapter 13. You've probably heard of this if you've been to a wedding before. Um, if you 
were at mine and Crystal's wedding, my vows to Crystal were based off of this chapter. I um, mean, it's all about love. And before I read it, I will tell you that when Paul is talking about love here, he's not just thinking about like dating relationships or those who are married. He's actually just talking about like if you're following Jesus, this is what love looks like. This is how you need to love everybody. So when I read this, I want you to think about that. It's one of the best, best verses in the Bible. Here it is. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, it never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. This is a pretty good list. Like, this is a powerful, powerful verse. And I'm wondering if some of you are thinking, man, I wish that I could find somebody like that. Like, I wish I could date somebody who loved me like that, who treated me like that. Or maybe you're even thinking, I wish the person I'm with right now would treat me like this, would love me like this. But what if we started to focus on ourselves first when it came to these? What if you replaced the word love with your name? Ryan never gives up. Ryan never loses faith. Ryan is kind. Ryan is patient. Ryan is not selfish. Ryan is not proud. And I'll tell you right now, I am a lot of those things a lot of the time. And I can fail at that. Just as I'm sure you guys have experienced that. What if we started with ourselves when it came to this love? And I want to challenge you guys for, this ne for these next few weeks with this series to focus on some of these things in this verse to apply it to your own life. And there's a lot of things in this passage and you're not just gonna wake up one morning and be perfect at loving in all of these ways. But what if you just picked like two or even one? Like what if you just picked uh, working on patience in all of your relationships? What if you worked on just picking kindness in all of your relationships? Because here's a beautiful thing. If you start loving like this, it's not only going to help your dating life now and in the future, but it will transform all of your relationships with your mom, your dad, your step parents, your small group leader, me, your spouse, your teachers, your coaches, your friends. This will transform your relationships. It will, I promise you that. But you have to to start taking steps. You have to choose what you want to work on becoming. Choose what you want to work on becoming, and number two, practice. And that's what these next couple weeks are about. And I'm actually gonna give you guys, I'm gonna invite you uh, to come and to write out some challenges for yourself. On my right, there's a station over here with some sticky notes and pens, and on my left, there's a station with some sticky notes and pens. And Nick and Benny, they're gonna throw on some music. And I just want you guys to read this verse. All, you can even see on the wall that I have all of those adjectives and descriptions of what love looks like. And I want you to focus on one or two of them. And then challenge yourself and write it down on the sticky note of how you want to start practicing that kind of love in the relationships in your life. Not just your dating relationships, it can be, but all of your relationships. Choose one or two, write it on the sticky note, put it up on the wall, and if you want to remember it, take a picture of it with your phone, and then start practicing it. And I promise you, when you put Jesus first and let his love be a reflection in your own life, it will transform your dating relationships and every other relationship in your life. Because focusing on becoming the right person is greater than finding the right person. So they're gonna play some music and whenever you guys feel comfortable, just come up to the sticky notes. We already got Isaac up there. Uh, feel free if you wanna open to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 uh, on the Bible app on your phone, you can, or uh, whip out an actual Bible, you can do that too. Uh, but I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to challenge yourself with how you can work on becoming and practicing 
this kind of love in your relationships.